Okay, today's topic is API call and date lost. Uh, the question is, a network engineer makes several API calls to Cisco Prime to retrieve the list of all devices. Each time the response is received, only a subset of the device is retained. The engineer noticed that HTTP code 429 is retained instead of 200 for some API calls. Why did the response exclude some of the devices? Hello everyone, welcome to 591Live. Cisco Certified DevNet Associated Class. The certification number is 200901. Okay, firstly, let me introduce the uh, 591Lab. 591Lab.com, pronounced as 591Lab, is a top IT training and certification exam brand in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. Our mission at 591 Lab is to provide our clients with exceptional exam preparation experience for certifications in Cisco, Huawei, Aruba, Juniper, Palo Alto, and 49 exam tracks. Okay, today's topic is API call and date lost. Uh, the question is, a network engineer makes several API calls to Cisco Prime to retrieve the list of all devices. Each time the response is received, only a subset of the device is retained. The engineer noticed that HTTP code 429 is retained instead of 200 for some API calls. Why did the response exclude some of the devices? Option A. The API applied an offsite that was indicated in the request. Option B. The API limited the request. Option C. The API timed out the request. Option D. The API failed to identify how many items to retrieve. So maybe you don't stand and not stand well about what this question describes and uh, I will uh, tell some detail about this question. Uh, so what happened in this question? Uh, this is a REST API visit and uh, uh, this is the REST API based on HTTP. So in the HTTP scenario, the client will give a request as like use the get method and visit some uh, some site and API or one devices to get the device list. Okay, the server process this device link, that is Cisco Prime, uh, Cisco Prime API, process the, uh, the request, the request parameters, the request uh, actions, and then do some data collection of all devices. When the server finish data collection, and uh, they will response it, it will response it uh, by JSON data, and maybe uh, this maybe example for example maybe 500 devices of total uh, uh, 540 devices so that means 40 devices are lost the data lost and uh, when the client process the server response and uh, open it and found uh, okay accept the date and got a 429 this code 429 means not a very good uh, not normalization, and uh, uh, because if the client get the correct answer, correct date from server, and uh, not any lost, maybe uh, they will get the 200, 200 state code. Uh, but sometimes uh, mining technical will get the date lost, but also you can get the 200 state code. The first technical is offset. So in the REST API system, when the offset is applied as indicated in the request, it typically means that the client is requesting a subset of results from a large collection. And the offset specifies the starting point within the collection. Let's break down the technical details. As like we use the uh, uh, for example, we use the A REST API to in the AI artificial intelligence scenario. scenario. Uh, we have the AI model, uh, the AI model client, and uh, 
I want to get more feature as like human face to training a human face net, human face model, and human face uh, data is picture or picture GPG or PNG. Okay, but the picture is very very large, and not the single picture very large. It's a variety of this picture, uh, maybe uh, two millions pictures. Okay, two millions human face. I the client can't accept all two million pictures, so maybe the the client want to uh, get some more, get some the the a uh, sub part, the sub part of the holy uh, data set, okay, and uh, process it, and then get more, process it, get more, process it. Uh, by this details we can use the offset. Uh, that means we can uh, we can set offset is zero and uh, okay we can also use the other parameters with limit and limit to 100 uh, get the 100 picture or get the 100 devices and then next time from 101 to 200 and then next time from 201 to 300 okay 100 uh, per process. Okay, let's get, uh, give you some detail about how to use offset in this scenario. Uh, this scenario is the uh, client wants to request the user get request to the server and uh, collections the data about devices. Okay. The client, uh, okay, the client will uh, send the request, send the request to a server specify parameters such as that endpoint URL, HTTP method. Uh, for example, get and possibly query map parameters including the offset. Uh, okay, the offset is 10 for now. And the next step is server. Server will do, do the server handling. Server handling means server process. Upon receives the, receiving the request, uh, the server's API endpoint handler process the request. When the offset is provided, it indicates the the position within the collection of results from which the client wants to start retrieve date. Okay, the next step is offset usage. Server uses the offset to determine where to start fetching results from the collection. For example, uh, if the offset is 10, the server will start fetching results from the 11th item in the collection. Uh, so, uh, after this, uh, the server will do date retrieval. A uh, server retrieves the subset of results starting from the 11th item. Okay, from the 11th item. Uh, this would involve querying a database, accessing a cache, or any other data retrieval mechanism depending on the server's architecture and implementation. Okay, after data retrieving, server will do the response. Once the server has fetched the request subset of res uh, resources, uh, it constructs an appreciate uh, response to send back to the client. This response typically includes the subset of results uh, along with metadata such as total, count, limit, and possibly a link to the next page if pagination, uh, pagination is used. Okay, uh, the last one is the client handling. Client retrieves the response from the server and processes the retained date as needed. If page pagination is implemented, the client might use the provided metadata to determine if there are more pages of data available and construct the subsequent, subsequent uh, requests to retrieve additional pages. Overall, applying an offset in the REST API request allow, allows the client to retrieve paged, uh, uh, paginated uh, results from a large collection of resources, uh, enabling efficient data retrieval and uh, consumption. Uh, but the important point is, the, the key point is, uh, if we use offset in our client's request, and uh, do this one, do this works. Uh, finally, server gives the response to the client. If there is any, uh, no any error in this uh, sequence me message sequence, 
okay in this visit, in this HTTP visit, no error. And uh, the server will respond to the client with the response state code. OOO. Yes, OOO is the normal state code. That means it will be all right. Uh, the correct, uh, the, the, the correct uh, connection, the correct uh, actions, and the correct date. So, but in this question, the client gets the state code is 429. So, uh, this is not the correct answer. The next key point of HTTP is read limit. So, in the REST API system, when the request is read limited, it means that the server limits the number of requests a client can make uh, within a certain period of time. This is done by prevent abuse, protect server resources, and maintain quality of survey service for all users. Uh, when a request exceeds the read limit, the server typically responds with an HTTP status code indicating the limit has been reached. Commonly with a status code of 429 to many requests. Along with the status code, the server may include additional information in the response headers to information uh, to inform the client about the rate limit restrictions. Uh, this information may include details such as uh, first is really after. Uh, this header indicates to the client when it can make another request without being read limited. It provides a suggested time after which the client should be retry the request. Uh, the second one is X read limit limit. This header specifies the total number of requests allowed within the given time window. And the next one is X read time limit read mean remaining. This header indicates the number of requests remaining before the read limit reset. For example, uh, if the read limit is 100 requests per minute and the client has made 80 requests so far, in the current minute. Uh, this header would indicate that there are 20 requests remaining before hitting the limit. Uh, the next one is accurate limit reset. This header specifies the time when the read limit will be reset. And typically uh, represented as the unique time spread. After this time, the client can make requests again without being read limit. So when the client receives a response with a read limit exceeded state, uh, it should add to the information provided in the response headers. Uh, it can either wait until the suggested retry after time has a placed or adjust its request rate according, according reading according to uh, stay within the rate limit. Uh, from the server side uh, perspective, rate limiting is often implemented using technicals such as token barcades, uh, sliding windows, or fixed windows. This mechanism tracks the number of each requests made by each client uh, within a certain time period and enforce the read limit coding. Uh, if a client exceeds the, the allowed number of requests within the defined period, uh, subsequent requests are either rejected, uh, authorized, or delayed until the read limit resets. The specific implementation depends on the request requirements and uh, uh, constraints of the system. So, if we meet someone, uh, if some client uh, make many requests, many requests, and the server handling a uh, well, um, uh, well processing the internal function um, to uh, get results, uh, but if the client request is too many, too frequency, and uh, maybe the server uh, as a server policy 
maybe the server will give 429 too many requests response to the client and the mix client tell the client to wait some minutes or wait some seconds and then uh, visit again. Okay, next key part is timeout in HTTP. When the API requests a timeout in the REST API system, it means that the server hasn't been able to uh, respond within a specific time frame. This timeout uh, could occur due to various reasons, such as a heavy server load, network issue, or inefficiency processing of the request. Uh, here is what typically happened when the API requests a timeout. Uh, first one is uh, timeout detection. The server monitoring incoming requests and starts a timer uh, when the request is received. This timer is set to a predefined threshold, uh, usually in milliseconds beyond which the request is considered to have timeout. Second one is error handling. Once the timeout threshold is reached without the response being sent, the server triggers an error handling mechanism. This mechanism might have a uh, very uh, dependency on the server framework or programming language being used. A third one, HTTP status code. This is an important one. Uh, the server typically retained an HTTP status code indicating that the request has timeout. Commonly, the status code is 504, gateway timeout 504. As used to in the scenario, yeah. Uh, this indicates that a proxy server, a, a proxy server as a server, as like the server acting as a gateway or intermediary. So this proxy server didn't receive a timely response from the upstream server. So, okay, it's timeout. And the client will get the status code 504. Okay, the fourth one is error response. Along with the HTTP status code, the server may include additional information in the response body to provide context about the timeout error. Uh, this could include a description of the error, uh, troubleshooting suggestions, and any relevant error codes. Okay, then logging. Uh, it's essential for the server to log such timeout events for monitoring and debugging purpose. Logging helps administrators and developers identify uh, patterns of timeouts, uh, diagnose underlying issues, and uh, optimize system performance. Uh, next one is retry mechanism. Retry machinism depending on the nature of the, the application and the requirements. The client may implement a retry machinism to resend the request if it times out. Uh, this can help migrate transition, transition, uh, transient ensures uh, and improve the chance of a successful response. Okay, the last one is load balancer consideration. In distributed system with load balancers, a timeout setting may also be configured at the log balancer level, and like the timeout in Kubernetes. Uh, if the timeout occurs at the load balancer, uh, it may retain an error response directory without forwarding the request to any specified server. So, it's critical for developers to design their APIs with appropriate timeout setting, error handling mechanism, and logging capabilities to ensure reliability and resilience in the face of timeout and other network related issues. Okay, the last point is uh, why an API failed to identify how many items to retrieve. So this is, uh, I think, it's a very hard uh, question uh, because in the REST API system, 
When the API fails to identify how many items to retrieve, it typically means that the client request didn't provide sufficient information for the server to determine the desired number of items to return in the response. So because if the client don't know uh, how many the total number or how many they want to how many items they want to get and uh, maybe uh, the server configure the page gauging mechanism so the uh, client will receive the response about the page gating um, but uh, the other scenario is the server API server designed as a uh, mm, not good, yeah, design not good and uh, make some in internal error. So that, that uh, also will lead the API failed to identify how many items to retrieve. So this situation can occur due to various reasons and addressing it requires understanding both the client's expectations and the server's capabilities. Okay, that's uh, some details I want to tell you about HTTP, about uh, the REST API, uh, and uh, uh, I think around our question. Uh, so back to our question, and the option A is the API applied an offset that was indicated in the request, and uh, I have told you that uh, if the API applied an offset and uh, uh, return back to the uh, correct answer, the correct date, and uh, so the in this case the the client will receive the response of status code what what status code two o o yes not four two nine so option A is not right okay option B is the API rate limit the request yes rate limit will lead to four two nine server will give the client a four two nine uh, error code. And uh, the correct answer is B. So the, the option says the API times timed out the request timed out maybe lead to 500 or 504 and uh, starts with 5, I think 500. In this series of uh, status code and errors, so not the 429. Oh, it's the answer D. So option D is the API failed to identify how many items to retrieve. This is uh, a uh, very strange uh, option and uh, maybe this is the error design of API and uh, predicating or other things but uh, if we know the client will get the HTTP code for tonight uh, it will not be the option D so in this question option B is the correct answer Thank you all for attending today's class at the 5 Diamond Lab. We hope you found the material informative and helpful. Remember, practicing is critical to mastering any new skill. So, review the course content and keep practicing with 5 Diamond Lab help and support. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. We appreciate your participation and uh, Look forward to seeing you in our future classes. Have a great day.